Hey everybody, this is Bill and Deb with iRide Tiny House Adventures. How are you doing today? Say hi, dear. Hi. Yeah, yeah. We got something we want to show you here right quick before it starts raining, and it's been threatening here for the last uh, 30 minutes or so. But uh, there's something that we have been telling you that we've been working on. It's not exactly uh, all set up exactly the way we'd like to have it, but it's close, and we're going to go ahead and show you what we're doing here. And it involves... Uh, it involves... Uh, Oh, it's an added routine that we've added when we go to dump our tanks. And we've already done a video on dumping our tanks. And in fact, uh, we showed you how easy it was because, Deb, I shouldn't have said it that way. Yeah, well, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we showed you that it could be done by a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> too little, too late. <laughs> too little, too late. Okay. Anyway, so we've already showed you how we go about our process of dumping the tanks. Well, now we've added something else to it because, uh, and we also showed you another video. Let me back up a little bit. We also showed you another video how we top off our fresh water tank. Now, at that time, when we showed you the video of topping off our fresh water tank, we were uh, fairly in fairly close proximity to a water spigot. And all we had to do was use extra lengths of uh, garden hose and run it from the water spigot over to the fresh water tank. We were within 100 feet. Yeah, within 100 feet, and we've got 100 foot of hose. It's junky hose, but we've got 100 foot of hose. We're going yeah, well, okay. to buy one of those uh, uh, zero, what is it, zero gravity hoses, they call it, or something yeah, like that. That's and what try, we're looking at, yes. Try one of those, uh, and then we'll do a review on that and let you know what we thought. But uh, we, uh, for the last two uh outings we've been at campgrounds where we don't have a water spigot close enough to the trailer to do that so we come up with a uh, another way to do it and well, this involves originally we were going to fill jerry cans and haul it down and pump right. it in and i can't lift that much weight yeah so. i kept telling deb you know it's it's easy all we got to do we get these uh uh, six gallon uh, water cans at Walmart and I think they were like $16 a piece or something like that and then we buy one of those uh, which I saw a YouTube video on that uh, probably a year and a half ago a guy what he did he bought one of those pumps that attaches to a drill and then he would pump from the jerry can with the drill pump into the uh, into the uh, fresh water tank and we got some big turkey uh, vulture turkey vultures flapping their wings they're fighting right now anyway <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's what we were planning on doing, and Deb said, Why can't the van? There ought to be some way we could make the van do our work for us. Right. So I did that, and then Bill came up with this awesome plan. Yeah. And it works so easy. Yeah, and uh, we're going to show you how this all works. I will tell you this. What we did, we went and bought a 35-gallon freshwater tank at... Uh, at okay. Tractor Supply, which, well, I'll show it to him here in a minute. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm going to go through the steps right quick. Uh -huh. But we bought this tank at, uh, at uh, Tractor Supply. It's a 35-gallon tank. Then I went ahead and bought a uh, hose bib to mount onto it. And uh, then from there, uh, I went over to um, Harbor Freight and bought a 12-vump, 12-vump, 12-volt transfer pump. And it has garden hose attachments on both sides of it. The uh, 12 volt uh, uh, transfer pump was like $47, and the tank at Tractor Supply was $100. So, uh, here the basic procedure that we do now first, we hook up the uh, we, we grab the, uh, the, the auxiliary tanks that are full and we go ahead and uh, get them in the van and hook to the van to take up to the Which, uh, when they're both full, that's 32 gallons. When they're both full, that's about 32 gallons because one is 22 and the other one's 32. So that kind of gives us a rough idea, you know, one's 35 gallons. One's 22 and one's 10. Makes 32. What did I say? You said you said something different. That's okay. I clarified for you because that's what I'm for. Why do you intimidate me so? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't know. <laughs> so the procedure is this. First, what we do, we go ahead and grab the full auxiliary tanks. One of them is 22 gallons and the other one is 10. And we uh, <laughs> place them in the van. The 10 gallon goes in the van. The 32 gallon, the 22 gallon hooks onto the uh, ball hitch of the van. Then we wash our hands. Yes. Right? With our outdoor faucet. With our outdoor uh, shower faucet that we have, uh, which is real close to the uh, water inlet on, the, uh, on that particular side of the trailer. Then we go up, and the first thing we do on the way to the dump station, while our hands are still clean, 
we go up to uh, the nearest water spigot and we fill the uh, 35 gallon tank, which doesn't take but maybe five minutes because, you know, the water flows real fast when it's not regulated. And once we do that, then we go from there over to the dump station and dump the tanks. Then we come back and hook the tanks back up. Then we wash our hands, wash again. Our hands again. And then we get the hose out and the pump out and we hook everything up and top off the hot water tank. The whole procedure takes about 30 minutes, I would say. Yeah, but we're topping off the fresh water tank, not the hot water tank. <laughs> there you go again. I hope you all got this straight. I hope you did for too. For some reason, you know, I just started talking and I didn't, didn't, didn't. I'm, I, I guess I need to start writing a script. Is that what I need to do? No, you're just probably hungry. That's right. So. That's right. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll forgive. You. Okay. Anyway, so give us a second here, and we're gonna flip the uh, camera around, and we're gonna show you how this is all hooked up and how it works. Be right back. All righty. This is the tank that we got at Tractor Supply, and like I say, it's a 35-gallon tank, and it was a hundred dollars. And what I did, uh, it's got a three-quarter inch uh, female outlet. It's also got a wider uh, male uh, threaded uh, coupler here, if you had a different kind of fitting. But on the inside is a three-quarter inch uh, female. So I went to uh, uh, Lowe's and got a uh, Schedule 80 uh, three-quarter inch nipple. And uh, that's the best way to go. And they're, they're like a dollar and a half or so. And then I uh, got this valve at Lowe's. And this valve, of course, you screw in the nipple into this fitting here. And then, of course, the valve screws onto the other end of the nipple here. And then, of course, I got the valve right here. Then I made up, a, I took some of my uh, hose that had got run because somebody ran over the couplings while we had it stretched out one time. I took it and made up a short hose that goes over here close to the front end of the van right here. And this is where we have the pump. Now this pump I got at uh, Harbor Freight. It's a 12 volt pump and it, uh, it really moves the water. It really, it's surprising how well it moves the water. The one thing that I don't like about it is, according to the instructions, and then quite honestly, the instructions are a little bit vague, they say in the instructions to lubricate on the inlet side, uh, lubricate the impeller from the inlet side with uh, uh, something like uh, food grade uh, uh, vegetable oil, which is what we do. And so every time I use it, just to be on the safe side, we go ahead and put a few drops of food grade vegetable oil on the inlet side just to make sure the impeller is lubricated really, really well. And then, of course, all you got to do is throw the switch here when you're ready to go, and, uh, and it, uh, it moves water like crazy. It's really surprising how well it moves water. It's really, really very powerful. They also have a 120-volt version, a 120-volt AC version, and it's about $20 higher. Um, but, uh, you know, for my application here, I thought it'd be best to use the one that I could hook to the van. If I were to continue using this particular setup, I would probably get me some kind of a power outlet that I could connect to the battery. Because the way this connects to the battery right now is, uh, is, is with the alligator clips here. I'd probably get me some kind of a power outlet that, that I could connect to the battery and then fuse the line and then maybe mount the power outlet right down here. So I could just simply plug the pump straight into a power outlet uh, right there. But that's really not what I want to, to have to do all the time. Probably what I'm going to end up doing once I get the pump, or I take that back, once I get the tank mounted permanently exactly where I want it in the van, and I'm probably going to slide it a little further back that way, I'll probably go ahead and get a regular 12-volt SureFlow pump, just like the one that's in, that's in the trailer that we use in the trailer. Uh, don't have to worry about uh, the impeller, uh, lubricating the impeller all the time and uh, have it all uh, hardwired and everything so that all I got to do is connect a hose to the other end of it when we pull up the top off the tank and then throw a switch and boom, we're going. But uh, for now, this setup works really, really well and we're going to demonstrate it for you. Now, Deb has already got the, the hose stuck in the inlet right there. That's right, you did treat it. And something else I need to mention, what she keeps in our kit now are two different things. We have one little spray bottle, which is a combination, her, her disinfectant that she makes up, which is a combination of alcohol and hydrogen peroxide, correct? And then the one in the green bottle is uh, bleach water. And uh, 
she always sprays a little bit of bleach, not very much, but just enough to be on the safe side when we're filling the tank here. So she's already disinfected the hose that goes into the water inlet. We've already purged the, uh, the hose with, uh, of all the air out of it. And now we're ready to go. Are you ready to go, dear? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the switch. So we just go right down here and there it goes. Walk over here and and you can see the water flowing right there and it's moving really really good. Is there a crease in the line? No, it's all right. It's fine. All right. But altogether, when we don't take time out to film, uh, it all takes roughly the whole process is a little over thirty minutes, I'd say, for everything. Yeah, everything around 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes tops, 40 minutes tops, but I would say closer to 30, uh, but it's all done and everything is seeming to work real, real well. But like I say, probably sure beats packing jerry, <laughs> sure pack jerry cans, that's for sure. So roughly, uh, you know, if you wanted to set up a system like this for yourself, uh, you're looking at an investment uh, between the uh, tank, um, the transfer pump from Harbor Freight. Uh, the uh, hose bib valve, the the little uh, uh, two inch long, three quarter inch Schedule 80 nipple, probably looking at around $160 total, you know, for everything. 160, 170 total for everything. But uh, man, it sure makes short work of all this. And <laughs> we were watching one of our neighbors, and they just bought their bought them a new trailer uh, about a little over a week ago, and this is their first outing. And uh, they're trying to top off their fresh water tank with uh, two-gallon water jugs. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're making an awful lot of runs back and forth to water spigots to do that. But, you know, uh, we didn't know everything to do right out of the chute either. So we're learning as we go, right? No, we still don't. We're still learning stuff all the time. But we're just trying to figure out ways to make it as simple as possible. And this is real handy, especially when you consider that we are stationary for uh, two weeks at a time. Sometimes just one week, but uh, uh, stationary, you know, most of the time we're stationary two weeks at a time. So this just makes it a whole lot simpler. And eventually the investment will pay for itself just through uh, convenience. convenience. Yes, convenience alone will do that. Making my life easier. Because <laughs> I'm not out here to work. You're not. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. And we do this about every third or fourth day, right? Uh, yeah. About every third or fourth day. Yeah, no big deal. Yep. You know, and uh, I take a shower every day. Uh, Deb takes one every other day at least. Well, I uh, try to get the lake in between. Well, she tries to hit the lake in between, and I haven't had time here lately. Uh, work's been kind of heavy. But anyway, uh, we could talk all day long about this, but uh, I hope you all picked up something that maybe you can use off of this. And... Uh, I don't know. Is there anything left we have to say other than? We're not camping. We're living. That's right. We're not camping. We're living. We'll be done with this in about 15 minutes, and we're going to start. Uh, we're going to sit down for supper, right? You got something going in the crock pot. Yes. What is it? Just a pot of beans with pork chops. Pot of beans with a pork chop in it. I'll. I'll I like a pot of beans with pork chop in it. Uh, do we have any beer? Uh, we're down to one bottle. One bottle. Oh, I'm rest will be over it. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. We're going to say goodbye for now. Remember, we'll say this one more time. We're not camping. We're living. Yeah, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventure saying we'll see you again real soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye now. Bye.